Hey, ready, set, go. It's time to hit the mark. This that show you need to know about. We set ourselves apart. Sports talk at the pinnacle. We got all the knowledge covering every level. Helping these young men get to college. Got the coverage of a DB. Vision of a QB coming at you like a DN. Let all of that sink in. Working in the weight room. We can't take no days off. Doing drills and they not looking. That's what make us stand out. Don't worry about how much time is left. We got it planned out. Execution elite footwork nasty when we running routes. Accuracy off the chain. We've been on it from the start. Reaching for the sky. Hitting the bullseye. We on the mall. What it do? What's happening? We up on Wednesday. The On Your Mark Show. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete. Live from the Fishbowl Radio Network. Listen, man, we got a special guest in the house today, Coach Butler. He's a trainer, a heavy in the game trainer, functional movement. We'll talk about all those things and more. Shout out to my guy, Coach Jay, on the road today, going to Florida, man. Safe travels. He'll be back next week. But listen, like, subscribe. We appreciate everybody that's been joining us the last, I would say, two months, man. We've really been doing big things and big numbers. Shout out to my guy, Ange, behind the ones and twos, as always, man. Listen, Coach Butler, man. Beast Mode Accelerated Performance. Listen, this guy does it. We had a chance to meet a couple weeks ago, and I really felt it in his spirit, and that's why we kind of connected. You know, this is what you want to do when it comes to getting yourself prepared for the next level. Um, You know, we talk about these kind of things all the time where it is preparing for the next level. How do you get there? What do you need to do? What are the avenues that you need to take? You know, and, and specific training. Now, We'll get into it in depth, but, you know, Coach Butler does more than just one type of training, multiple sports, uh, multiple types of training, and we're going to talk about that as well. But just to give you a little history on before we dive into it, Coach Butler served as a first sergeant in the Army for over 20 years, uh, but, you know, training has really been his passion. You know, I've talked to him a couple of occasions, and, uh, you know, since we met a few weeks ago, we've been keeping in touch. But athletic performance, functional movement, those are the things in his repertoire. But we'll we'll dive into that in just a little bit. Again, Coach Butler, appreciate you joining me here on On Your Mark Show. What I like to do with coaches is just a, a little bit of background on how you got to where you are. You know, I, I know we talked about, uh, you know, your playing time in high school. We'll start there, and then you went right into the service. So we'll talk about that a little bit, man. How you feeling this morning? And I'm good. How about yourself? Man, great, man. Just busy, man. Dealing with that DFW traffic. You know how that goes, man. I think I'm going to have to borrow Jerry Jones' a helicopter one of these days and just kind of, you know, reroute myself that way. It's just, you know, always a tough time trying to get from A to B in the Metroplex. But, man, talk to me about how you got to where you are. Start, you know, high school and then on into the military. Well, first of all, Mark, I appreciate the time, man. I Absolutely. appreciate you allowing me the opportunity to come on your platform. Yeah, sir. Absolutely. And uh, just be able to talk a little bit. Um, so, I um, came in the military at 17. I graduated from City Hill. Absolutely. Um, I was a, a good athlete, nothing spectacular. Uh, played sports throughout the years, uh, middle school and high school. Um, 17, decided to join the Army, right? Um, my dad said, hey, look, um, either you, you going to college or you going to the military, either way. You gotta make a decision, right? And Absolutely. just not stay at the house, which I thought was the best decision for me. So 17, uh, started off first first duty station for a hood, right? And so uh, growing up playing sports, also growing up in the church, right? Gave you that stability. It gave you that, that outlet. It also gave you the things that you do in sports as far as the teamwork, right? Um, we also had the the members at the church and the, the brothers and that, that that gave you a different outlook on life as far as teaching you a lot of different technical things, right? Uh, but family was really big, man. So uh, I used those things to grow up while I went to the military, right? And so uh, first do a station for hood, and I went to Germany. Uh, and I know you asked me yesterday, when did I start doing a little training and coaching? I, I would say I never really had it in my repertoire to say, hey, I'm just gonna grow up and be a coach, right? I always admired coaches and I always had a lot of mentors. My dad's a pastor, he still is a pastor. Uh, he works with Dallas Police Department as a chaplain. Um, but I admired the people around me. I admired those coaches and the things they did and how they can take a person from point A and get them to point Z, right? right. Um, so I was in Germany. My son was five years old. He's 19 years old now in the military and in, in Korea. But um, 
five years old. They, he, he was doing T-ball, right? Uh, they was going to have no program unless they had a coach, mm-hmm. right? So, of course, I volunteered to be the coach, right? Didn't know nothing about T-ball. So I started to coach him. Uh, then that led to uh, basketball, right? And you know how it is with some five-year-olds. Absolutely. Man, it's like playing tag out there. I mean, right. you're just trying to make things up as you go. Your patience man, you is what you patience. have to have. You have to have serious patience. Been through that, been there, done that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that's, uh, you know, where it starts for kids. And, you know, the right coaching as well, you know. It, yeah. it, and, and I think that's where you're going with it. Um, you know, besides the patience, but the right uh, voice that they have to have as mm-hmm. well. So talk about that a little bit. Well, um, I was really just trying to get by, right? And uh, I wanted my son to have a season. So, uh, man, at patience, I was 20, I think I was 22, 23 years old. Man, I was young, right? So patience wasn't really on the top right. list of uh, my qualities at that time. Right. But we made it happen, right? right. And I started enjoying it. I started seeing what it did for the kids, right? But Absolutely. the first thing uh, I think we as coaches all have in common, it's not about us, right? Absolutely, right. That was the reason why I decided to coach, right? Because my son, along with his peers, won this season, right? And then uh, it's called CYS, Child Youth Services in the military. CYS needs some coaches, so hey, we just volunteered, right? One thing led to another. Uh, during that time frame, I decided to get into a little bodybuilding. I really enjoy bodybuilding. I like combatives. Combatives is a different form of like jujitsu right. that we had in the military. And so those are some of the things that I was doing right. uh, within the Kentucky area. I mean, I'm sorry, not Kentucky, but uh, in Germany. Um, then years go by, you know, at that time I had two kids. And then, you know, we went to our next do stage. I had three. And then it just kept on. Uh, now, now I have four, right? right. I had four, four kids. I just became very heavily involved with my kids, right? And of mm-hmm. course, when you come involved with your kids, you come involved with other people's kids, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Because they have the buddies. And so, did the bodybuilding. I really like uh, to get my body right. It also helped my focus. Because in Germany, I don't know if you've ever been overseas like I have that. Not yet. Uh, but it's a lot of partying, a lot of different things. The right. beer is really good. And so, you right. know, I had to find something that kind of honed me in. Right. Um, I started getting into the personal training. I did ISSA. Um, and I really enjoy empowering and educating and training. Uh, at that time, it was adults, right? right. Um, I was doing a personal training piece along with um, doing a little side coaching for CYS along with the intramural sports with um, some of the soldiers. Right. Fast forward, uh, we get to uh, New York uh, for a drum. I dived into personal training uh, soldiers that was really trying to be athletes, right? Mm-hmm. right. Uh, I had a young man who uh, aspired to go and try to for the combine, and mm-hmm. and I just fell in love from there, right? right. It wasn't the fact of the matter just because he was going to come out. It's the fact of the matter that if I could tell that young man, hey, look, I need you to jump off a cliff, right? That young man would have said, hey, I trust the process, right? Right. Um, and I got into that was my first athlete, right? And his name was Brandon, too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, as time went on, I got into coaching football, got into coaching basketball a little bit more, uh, really uh, prided on speed development. And then I got to Fort Knox, Kentucky, which was my last duty station. That's where I retired at. In 2015, I decided to start a youth track program called Beast Mode, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, which fell up under Jesse Shelton out of Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, we started a program. And it was really geared to be able to get kids out of the element, uh, build a general yet competitive program to be able to travel, get the kids out of the area, and also create a a movement, right, where you're getting kids, black, white, Asian, everybody together. Because everybody know in the military, you have a lot of different diversity. You have a lot of kids from everywhere, right? It's a melting pot. Exactly. Right. Bringing kids together with one co- common denominator, right? That's the beautiful thing that the military and sports have in common, right? Right. We have one common goal, and we work together for that common goal, right? right? So my job was to we start this program um, to be able to get these kids and go out there and compete, right? And one year in 2016 led to, uh, from 2016 to 2019, we become a very high caliber track program. Had the fastest girl in the nation. In 2019, I was voted top 50 coach in the nation through PCA, Positive Coaches Alliance. Um, had a lot of different kids, had seven kids get full scholarship athlete, uh, to uh, for football and track. Mm-hmm. 
But at the same time, through all these accolades, it was developing youth. Uh, was also building camaraderie within the community, was bringing families together, uh, bringing kids together, getting them outside the element and using sports to relate to everything they did on and off the field, right? right? So one thing about in track, right, you got to run your race. Absolutely. Right? You got to run your race, right? And it's going to be some good days, it's going to be some bad days, but you got to push through, right. right? And so, but at the same time, when it comes down to a team, right, it's just safer in a re- relay. Mm-hmm. Everybody has to run their race for each other, right. right? For each other. And so, um, throughout the throughout the couple of years, right, that's why I do what I do, right? So I, I, I love training athletes, but I love mentoring. And now, so right now, I'm, I've been in Texas now a year as of yesterday. Okay. And um, so I'm glad, I'm happy to be back home. Um, and I'm a JRTC instructor also, right? right and right. so, of course, you know, my brand is called Beast Mode, but we have a three within that Beast Mode, and that means encourage, empower, and elevate. Those are things that I live by. Uh, I'm always trying to encourage, empower our youth, right? Or anybody that's within your circle and elevate. That means get out the way and let them do, right? Right. Um, uh, the host, he, he was telling me um, earlier, he was asking me, how does it feel, man, when your kids are getting a little older, right? I got a 19-year-old, right. um, an 18-year-old, a 15, and a uh, 12-year-old, but my 19-year-old is out the house now. He's in right. career. Absolutely. And so he's like, man, how do you feel? I said, well, I can't speak for my wife. Yeah, but I can't speak for myself. Uh, as far as we were happy parents, right? right. We're excited. Uh, they're gonna have some bumps and bruises, right? But they're gonna learn life, right? right? But my goal throughout his time period, that 17 years before he got the house, was to encourage and power. And now he's on his own, right? right? Of course, we're always here, right? But now we're elevating him mm-hmm. to become the very best you that you can be, right? And my job as a parent is to make you better than I'm, that I am, right? All right, so. I try to relate everything, and we, even when I'm dealing with these youth, the athletes, I try to look at them the same way I look at my kids, right? right? I'm, I'm trying to make you better in everything that you do and also drop those seeds that's going to help you on everything outside of your field of play, whether it's track, football, baseball, basketball, whatever it is. Right. Well, I mean, those are some of the things that we kind of hit on each week. Uh, you know, the, the show is geared to kind of – help the parents empower themselves by educating them on things that they need to do mm-hmm. outside of what's just you know presented in front of you. There's a lot of things that go into getting recruited. There's a lot of things that goes into getting playing time. There's a lot of things that goes into getting to the next level from high school, and those are some of the things uh, that go into what we do here on On Your Marsh on a weekly basis. And the reason I wanted to have you on is because everything that you said goes into – the youth. It takes a village. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just one person that, that helps these kids get to the next level. And when we say the next level, we're not talking about Division One necessarily. Any level, because it's only 7% of any sport that goes to college. You know, you break that down, there's, you know, hundreds of high schools, but there's only a certain select of colleges. Then when we go to professional ranks, it gets smaller. It gets to like 1% to 2%. Mm-hmm. So, those are the type of things that we talk about on a weekly basis, and that's you know reason we wanted to bring you in is to talk about things that you do to assist and get these kids and parents and families to the next level. And you've been successful at it, um, you know, from a track standpoint. You know, I was going over your resume; that, that's very impressive. Uh, kids going to college that's very impressive, and that's kind of what you know Beast Mode Performance is all about in a nutshell. So let's talk about movement and things that you work on when you start to break down specific training. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, everything for any sport starts from the ground up, you know, the base. You mm-hmm. know? So what are some of the things when they come to you? Hey, coach, let's take a track athlete because we talk, talk about football a lot. Mm-hmm. Let's take track athlete, for instance. You know, what are some of the things that you kind of incorporate in, you know, and it, it really is going to be, you know, for track it's different. It's not position specific. Mm-hmm. It's race specific. Mm-hmm. You know, a sprinter is not going to have the same muscle movement or uh, things as a distance runner. You know, or a middle distance runner. Mm-hmm. Uh, a long jump is going to be want to be more explosive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So what are some of the things you try to break down with those guys when you start to get them into the meat and potatoes of everything? Uh, first of all, it's, it's starting off with your mental, right? Uh, your mental game got to be right. And at the same time, you talked about the, the foundation, right? The foundation is key to life, and the foundation is key to, to running, right? Absolutely. You got to start off with the feet, man. Make sure Absolutely. they have that stability. Right. If that's offline, everything else, the whole chain all the way up is going to be off, right? Right. So a lot of things, we do a lot of unilateral things, um, working on stability, um, 
working on understanding where your body is, okay? Uh, kinesthetic, right? Can, right? Do you know exactly where your body is at all time? Do you have that proprioception, right? And and know what your body's doing, when it's doing it, and how it's doing it, right? Right. Um, also, core strength is key, right? Hip mobility, hip strength is key, right? So those are things, can you get in the proper position to be able to apply force in the right direction to get you where you're going? Right. right? So those are some of the things that I tend to work on. And then we just keep it basic, right? And we, we meet the kids where they at, right? You got some that can that can start at this level and some that have to start from, from ground zero, right? right? Or you have some that do have, who have God-given ability. They wake up with it. They wake up with it, right? right. But they don't have any kind of structure, right? right? So meeting the kids where they at, but at the same time empowering them, say, hey, look, I want to be able to open your mindset to something different and be comfortable with being comfortable, be comfortable being uncomfortable. Absolutely. Right? To get you where you need to be. So every athlete, every kid is different, right? And so, but like I say, the start, that's the foundation. Right. That's, that's the foundation. And so uh, just like everything else in life, you got to work on that that foundation piece. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, and that's the, the meats and potatoes of it. You know, you don't just... You know, everything is about development, and mm-hmm. I think that's also a big thing that, that uh, you know, reading your bio and, and going, uh, you know, on the website and looking at things, the development piece. I think mm-hmm. a lot of times, uh, you know, we can start, you know, with the little league, the middle school age, you know, uh, we'll take football, for, for instance. A lot of guys, if they don't know how to coach, they put the fastest kid in the backfield and hand it to him. Correct. And expect him to go and make plays without right. giving him the development piece, the instructional piece, and then, you know, the formation piece as far as the scheme goes. Mm-hmm. A lot of that goes out of the window, mm-hmm. you know, and then sometimes uh, that part is not to get, you know, developed into the kid until they get to high school and maybe even college. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they're, they're uh, you know, successful off of just what they wake up with, those right. intangibles, without having a development piece. and. You know, we see kids like that all the time, and I think that's an important piece that gets left out mm-hmm. in development. You know, functional movement, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, but talk about functional movement a little bit, because you know, shout out to Coach Jay. You know, he's one of those guys oh, in the yeah. functional movement game as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, we talk about these things all the time. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from your perspective, tell me a little bit about that. Well, we met. Uh, well, me and Coach Jay, we met and we like, man, we got the same philosophy. Absolutely, right? he, no doubt. He, he, even small <laughs> things were like, hey, I'm yeah. starting my training session, taking your shoe off. Like, yeah. hey, you know, you, you got these big old thick shoes that you're trying to work the stability on and you yeah. you don't know where your body's at. You right. can't even feel your feet because you got these big old thick, thick, th- shoe, thick huh? shoes on. You know what I <laughs> mean? But I would say this, um, I'm an old school mentor. I call him my Kentucky Pops, uh, mm-hmm. Sonny Collins. Mm-hmm. He told me something years ago, and I didn't understand initially, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, you always got to put the horse in the stable and just let it play, right? Um, later on, I asked, I said, Coach, what did you mean by that? Uh, and what he meant was, I think kids don't play no more, right? Wow. Kids don't play. It's, it's so many things. Sometimes we make things so robotic, right? And we're training kids at age five to be a running back, right? right. I mean, you, you, these kids young. You, it's, the body's still developing. I mean, right. even at 12, 13, you still don't know what their body, what they're going to do at age 17, what their body's going to develop it to. Right. Um, but letting kids play. Because back in the day, we didn't come inside. No, right? we didn't. Stayed we out to the, the streetlights came out. the streetlights came yeah. out. Right? Right? Well, you better be back in before the streetlights come in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And but, don't slam that screen door. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> and don't drink my orange juice inside. Yeah, so, drinking out the water Yeah, hose. you don't drink out the spigot outside. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, letting kids play. Right? right. Uh, let, letting them just figure it out. Right? So, how many times do kids go out there and play red light, green light? No. Nah. You know what I mean? Hopscotch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Freeze yeah. tag. Right. Okay, freeze tag is what? Functional Accelerate, movement. decelerate. Right. Right? At, yeah. at, his, at his best. Yeah, we used right? to call it throw up tackle. Or throw up tackle, yep. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So those are the things we played on Thanksgiving. Um Facts. We played them during Christmas time frame. I mean, you, you always got in the front yard and you playing um, yeah. throw up tackle. Absolutely. Right? And just... Yeah. You gotta figure it out. There was right. nobody saying, "Hey, there's a pothole right here. You can't go here. Right. We'll put a cones here because it's a little ditch right here." Absolutely. You had to figure it out. Your body mm-hmm. adapted, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's so many things that we don't do anymore mm-hmm. that makes it a little bit more unique when you start training kids. That even you know training your average kid, you're like, man, 
I said left leg, right arm. Right. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Right. You know what I mean? Can you just go out and jump in a straight line? Or jump and then turn around the 180. I mean, what can you can you figure it out, right? right? Without me having to walk you through every so I think is there's one thing I would say to parents, allow kids to just play, right? It also helps their mental so it won't be so demanding throughout the years where like, man, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Just let them play. Right. Let them play at a young age. Let them figure it out and you'll understand. When, they, when you let them figure it out, they're going to use so many different muscle groups, right, than they would if they was just strictly football, strictly right. basketball, right? right? They're going to they're gonna use everything, and they're gonna, the mental is going to be good, right, because now they can adapt to what's around them and not right. have to, everything just one, one-sided. one Right. So um, those would be my functional movements, right, and just mm-hmm. keep it basic. What well, right. we did, push-ups, sit-ups, uh, some squats, right? Uh, isometrics, the thing we did in basketball, get on the wall, let's go out there and do some isometric squats, right? right, right. Calf raises, things of that nature. Those are the basic things that you can do, and then you expand, right, at a young age, right? right? Before right. you start getting it. I mean, to weights and stuff it's like a, that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with introducing them to some type of weight training, right? right. But when it becomes so um, specific, you ask yourself why? Mm-hmm. Right, because does anything run through a straight bar? Right. If this kid's eight, nine years old, why? Right. You know what I mean? So I always ask, why do we do what we do? Mm-hmm. Right? Is it because that's how we were taught? Absolutely. Or is it just because, just because? Right. right? So understand why you're doing what you're doing. Understand who you're dealing with. It's everybody's different. Absolutely. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it's a melting pot of things. And I think that gives you a little bit of advantage being able to see the world a little bit more. You know, mm-hmm. some of us haven't, you know, been out of our comfort zone out of our neighborhoods mm-hmm. you know i you know me personally that was a thing where i had to change directions and a maturation process is you know i didn't get out of my neighborhood mm-hmm. you know i was neighborhood lives you know small area you don't think about the big pond or the big fish until you get out of that mm-hmm. and that goes with the training and that goes with uh, athletics as well you know if you're only playing in a certain uh, neighborhood or certain things sometimes you know kids don't have a chance to to travel around, uh, they don't get out of their high school until they get to college at the mm-hmm. next level, um, and those are some of the things that kind of traps them into one way of thinking and one way of training and one way of being coached. And I think that gives you an advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, talk about how you've kind of you know put your pot of gumbo together with your experiences in the military to bring that to your training perspective. Well, um, a lot of things were you know people are saved because you're military twenty years, mm-hmm. but. Um, my dad was in the military, but he 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 was big on discipline, right? right? And so when I got in the military, I thought a lot of things were kind of easy, right? right? Even when the drill sergeant sitting there fussing at you, I was like, man, this is it's easy. Right. Be re- do what you're supposed to do. Be what you're supposed to be at time. Uh, it's one thing that he used to always tell me when I was growing up, right? Uh, I never forget it. You know, you have some trash in your yard, right? Mm-hmm. And he say, Brandon, why ain't get that trash? And I'd be like, I ain't put it there, <laughs> but is it supposed to be there, right? right? And I didn't understand that until I started having, so I got into leadership positions throughout the year, right? If you know what right looks like, right? Whether you did it or not, if you know what right looks like, then Absolutely. do it, right? So it wasn't my trash, but it was my yard, right? Yes. It was our yard, right? Right. I, did I pay the bills? No. But at the same time, it was our yard, and we took pride in our yard, right? That was during the time frame, you can't walk with nobody yard, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Nowadays, people just walk the yard, whatever. Right. But, you know, those things, but... um. Uh, throughout the military, um, those disciplines, right? Be supposed to be on time, time management, teamwork. Military is so equivalent to sports that people don't realize, mm-hmm. right? We are fighting for one common cause to um, um, to fight for our country and against domestic and foreign terrorists, mm-hmm. right? But that's our cause, right? Right. In sports, you are fighting for as one mm-hmm. for one common goal to win. Absolutely. All right? Yep. And everybody has to play their position. Right? So as they say football, the offensive lineman, the guard, the tackle, the tight end, the receiver, right? On the other side of the defense end, these everybody has a responsibility for a common end goal. Same with the military. We have different jobs, different missions, right? 
but the same goal. It's the same thing, right? And so I take those things and using that perspective to be able to correlate that within our sports, right? Mm -hmm. And also getting our kids to understand, hey, look, yeah, you have to work together as a team for that common goal. So you need to train together. You should be eating together. You should be talking together, building a relationship together, right? Because at the end of the day, y'all trying to see the same, get the same results. Absolutely. Right? Iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. Right? And you only as strong. I was talking to my JRTC kids this morning. You only as strong as your weakest link, right? So what do you do? Laugh and belittle the person that's not where you need to be? No, because at one point, or depend on the environment, you might you be there. there with, you might be there, right? Right. So we have to find a way to be able to get everybody on the board because we're trying to re accomplish the same exact thing, right? Right. So, um, so I can say military, sports, it all causes this. It's the same, right? Right. It's just you just have two different, but they they parallel with it as far as what you're striving for, right? Because right? everybody. Like Nick Saban said, do your job. Do your job. Right? Do yeah. your job. Right. It, it sounds simple, but I think, uh, you know, they make it difficult when you try to individualize things. Now, tennis, golf, those are individual sports. Mm -hmm. So the team sport, you know, you, you, you were talking about all, each position that you have in, in football. If it's not a well-oiled machine, it's just not going to work. That dog don't hunt. Mm -hmm. And you, you realize, the, you know, the better teams – uh, the better clubs or organizations are the ones that stick together, like you said, eat together, travel together, get that camaraderie. Those are the guys that, you know, pretty pretty much, you know, they're successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's kind of, you know, you mentioned Nick Saban. That's his motto of things. You know, he wants everything to be in concert, to be smooth. And, you know, he's been successful where he's been in, to do it in that particular way. Now, uh, you know, outside of, you know, the perception outside of, that program is that he's a disciplinary and he's you know this this and that but those things he's laid down the law you know what you're getting into when you come mm -hmm. yeah i think you know i don't know him personally but from looking outside he probably lays his cards on the table and that's what you have to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what you have to do when you uh, discipline and everything now you touched on something that i thought was interesting and we'll we'll get back to beast mode in just a second that i think that a lot of people may not know about and me i don't know about bodybuilding Mm -hmm. that's a bigger discipline that you have to have in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. The discipline, the way you eat, the discipline, the way you train, certain things, uh, you know, time. You know, talk about that a little bit and how you took that part of training to what you bring into beast mode today. Well, um, you know, bodybuilding is an individual sport, like you mentioned with tennis, all right? But I believe that as a, a coach, mentor, trainer, I have to um, strive for success in my day-to-day -day life, right? And use those disciplines. Discipline is not things you want to do. It's the things you got to do. You got to do. Right. You know, you need to do. Right? Absolutely. So I got into bodybuilding not because I wanted to be on stage like on a sports night. I got into bodybuilding because my kids were getting a little older, right? Uh -huh. They were starting to see some of the things. And if I wasn't careful, this just to be honest with you, right. I was going to be out there partying and drinking and, that, you know, you know, and not pursuing on both ends as a father, right. along with as a, uh, a lead in the military. Right. So I needed something to kind of say, okay, I need, I need to ch switch it. Absolutely. Right. So if I know if I put myself in a position, bodybuilding, right, mm -hmm. at that time, right, and say I'm gonna do a competition, right, where I compete in two competitions, which the All Armed Forces um, um, Championship, along with the Stuttgart Championship, where I was in Germany. Right. And if I put the destination out there, right, I was talking to some of my cadets today about that, well, actually last week, and they all say, hey, I want to incorporate discipline. That's why I'm in JRTC, right? I said, what, in the way I said, what is discipline, right? Textbook says this, right? But what is discipline? And what, what keeps us in line with discipline? Right. Our vision. Our vision keeps us in line with discipline. So if you know your vision, you know, you know the middle piece that you have to, now you have to incorporate. So my vision, I gotta wake up at five thirty in the morning or four o'clock in the morning to get somewhere, right? Right. Right. But at the same time, I gotta get in order to get there at seven, I gotta set the alarm. I gotta wake up. I gotta do everything I do. Everything needs to be already dressed, right, dressed, and ready to go, right? right. To get to that same place. But at the same so with bodybuilding, I got into that so I can discipline myself. Also, I can be able to walk the walk that I was talking. 
right? Absolutely. That's how many times Practice have we, what you preach? Exactly. How many yeah. times have we been in a position where somebody says, many. do as I say, not as I do? Absolutely. Right? Yep. I, I went to school to achieve my bachelor's. It's not because I had to. It's because at some point my kids was getting a little old and I knew they were going to go to college. So in order for them, for me to say, hey, strive for success, right? Continue to push, even though you're working, even though you got this, even though, you know, the dog died, whatever cat died, whatever may be, you had a bad day, you got to push too. But Absolutely. they had to see that within my life first, right. right? They had to see that, hey, my dad is going to work every day. He's going out there mentoring, he's teaching, he's doing this. And then at the same time, here it is, 10, 11 o'clock at night, he's out there studying. And then he still wakes up in the morning at four or five o'clock in the morning to go better himself, go to PT every day, be a first sergeant, do everything else, and then everything is clockwork. Right. But all I'm doing is is showing them better than I can tell them. Absolutely. Right? So that's why I got into bodybuilding, but not knowing that years, my later years, that little small stepping stone was gonna help me to be where I am now, right? To also be in some pretty good say I did a, a 5K this past Saturday, Woo. Uh, and uh, I, I said that I wasn't gonna run no more than a lap after I retired <laughs> in 2020, and I yeah. went out there and did it, right? Right, right, right. But the beautiful thing about it was um, one of the young ladies I train, athlete, track athletes, and then um, her twin brother uh, was one of my cadets. Mm -hmm. They were there, right, right? Right. So they recorded me as I went through the fence line. So they, they were like, hey, first song, Man, your, your running form was good, right? You know, <laughs> and I'm really dying inside, right? Yeah. But the thing is, what I want to get to is that you never know who's looking. Absolutely. Right? So now I got out there and did it, right? And now I inspired the, my cadet and my athlete to be able to go out there and push that extra mile. Right. There's no excuse because you're 41 years old. No doubt. Right? No doubt. If I'm asking, they, they hear me say, man, Okay, first time pushing me or Coach Butler is pushing me, but what is he doing? Right. So now I can show you. Absolutely. Right. And so that's what I don't mean to go all the way around no, with the good. bottom bit, but that's there's a why behind why I did this. Absolutely. Right? Um, and so that's why that's what I want to push out every time I'm training mm -hmm. a young athlete or even dealing with parents. Yes. Right. Yes. Or dealing with your peers. Right. Right. You know, how do we make each other better? Absolutely. You are my blind side. Yes, right? sir. Absolutely. You're my blind side. So I might think I'm walking a straight and narrow, but I say, like, man, be like, man, come on, man. Yeah. Let's let's get it right. Right. All right. And if I if I really admire our relationship, I'm gonna get it straight. Right. Right. When I was bodybuilding, I couldn't see my back muscles. Right. My wife was my back, my blind side. Right. I only see my front. Right. So when I get in the mirror flex, I'm like, oh man, I'm straight. Yeah. But my back weak. Yeah. Well, it's too late to get it right on the stage. Right. That's just a, and you ain't got no points for that. Right. Right. So we all have blind sides, right? And one thing me and SD was talking about, even as trainers, mm -hmm. we check each other. Absolutely. Right. But I, you have to get yourself around folks that's going to check the checker, right? right? And get you operate at your highest level at all times. Right. right. And for me, it was my family, it was my kids, that was always my blind side right or my athletes okay um and those that i dealt with right and so that was my blind side to help me get to where i was at right yep. right well i think that that and that's why i went there with it because i know that you know from the outside looking in bodybuilding is something you have to have discipline that also goes back and, and comes together and holds hands with you know beast mode performance if you mm -hmm. don't have a discipline then it doesn't work mm -hmm. you know you have to be regimented in what you do uh, you know, when it comes to training or doing something uh, or, or learned behavior, mm -hmm. you know, it takes 21 days. But once you get that routine, then it becomes second nature. Yeah. You know, you, you're you going to have to get up, you know, f for for us, you know, if we get up and go to work routinely. Mm -hmm. So if we can get up and go to work, then we can apply that discipline everywhere else. You know, we go on somebody's job, we should be able to do discipline. And, and you know, man, that's that's something, you know, me personally, I've struggled with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I, I've, I've gotten better about it and I've coned in on to that uh here probably I would say in the last three months or so, just trying to change my whole outlook on that. You know, mm -hmm. when you, even though you get older in, in the mindset, you still think that you're that guy, 16, 17, in mm -hmm. your mind. You mm -hmm. know, you because you you did it. Right. You know, it, right. you you can see what you did, but now it's just trying to keep that alive and mm -hmm. well. And you know, kids don't understand that until they get, oh, you old now. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. Right. 
but yeah. you try to impart that wisdom on them. And mm. I think, you know, I love how you have the eater empowerment part. Uh, I think that's something that, you know, sometimes we get muddled with training mm -hmm. to think it's all about the physical. It's all about what you can do when you get on the track or you get on the basketball court or on the baseball diamond. But having that mental capacity to compete and want to compete at a high level starts at the training part of it. Mm -hmm. So talk about that a little bit, uh, you know, empowerment. Uh, you know, what do you give to them? And then how do you impress that on the parents? Because you have to have the parents in order to get the athletes. Right, right. So um, empowerment is so key, man, because you can get the best out of anybody. Right. Um, you can get – you tell, hey, I'm, you jump off that cliff, man, I'm going to save you before you get there. <laughs> and, and if they believe, right, in right. you, right, right, but I think everybody's different. It's 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 first getting to know and building a relationship with every person you encounter, right? Mm -hmm. So that you deal with, right? right? Right, that you encounter. But you know, whether it's my cadets, JRTC, whether it's my athletes, right? right? Anybody I, I'm dealing with on a day to day basis, I got to figure out what makes them tick, right? Right, and then my job once I figure that out, what makes them tick? My job is to kind of slowly, depending on the the, the the person right because right. some might break right? right but slowly be able to add a little bit more pressure but in order to that pressure they got to know that you care right it's hard to empower somebody first without them knowing that you care because they're looking like man you ain't my mom you ain't my dad right yeah you know i need the, i need we have to be able to show that we care right and i have i i'm bought into you right Absolutely. so you to buy into me right, right. And then now, once you get that mental piece, right, and empower them to become the very best, they're going to give you all. They're going to push past the line, not just to the line, right? They're always going to hear. I think the most beautiful thing as a coach is to always get those text messages, those emails from kids, right? Because, you know, especially, and then they get older, they don't have right, to, right? right? You're talking about 18, 19, 20 years, saying, man, coach, I still hear your voice, right? And I'm like, Coach, coach would never accept that, right? right? So even when I'm in Texas and I got kids in Kentucky, or I got kids in New York, I got kids in different areas, they can still hear those certain things, right? It's almost like, you know, even small things like eating habits. Right. Like, man, I ain't even supposed to be doing this. Right. And they looking around like, <laughs> coach, I'm in a whole other state. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but that's the empowerment piece. And you talked about the parents, right? Yes. I think it's great. So we um, was talking about it earlier. I have one daughter, mm -hmm. right? And I have three boys. Mm -hmm. And that's my baby girl. Right? right. Her birthday was yesterday. She turned Happy 19. Birthday. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And um uh, so it's it's so important for us to get to know who the parents and the parents to know who we are. Right. Like when I was doing my training, I always wanted to know who the parents are. When Absolutely. I had my track program, I wanted to, we had it was no uh online briefs, mm -hmm. right? All our briefs was in person. Right. Because I want you to know who you're dealing with. I also want you to know what the insight was. Right. What is our intent and where are we trying to go? Absolutely. Hey, this is this is February of 2021, mm -hmm. right? In uh, August of 2021, we're trying to go to the Junior Olympics. That's where we're going. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is this is this is where we at right now. Right. This is the work we're gonna do from from here to there. Mm -hmm. hey, and they need to know, right? And they also need to know what am I? What are you about, right? What is your mission? What are you? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> What's your philosophy as a coach? Right. What's your expectation for your athletes? Mm -hmm. Right. And then getting to know those parents. It's also when you get to know the parents. Now you have the parents buy in, because now when coach when they child comes home it's like man, coach you said this. Mm -mm. I already know who Coach Butler is. No doubt. Right. I already know what he's about. Right. So, what did coach tell you to do? Right. But I also tell I tell parents like, hey, look. Don't try to put everything on Coach Butler now, right? Because, um, you know, Holding I do them I, accountability. Right. You know, yeah. I had them times where, <clears throat> man, I'm sorry, I'm going to get some water. Go ahead. But, uh, excuse me. Again, Coach Butler, from Beast Mode Performance, man, listen, if you, you might want to rewind this back. And some gems been dropped, some jewels been dropped. But, you know, you, you mentioned having the parents buy in and, <clears throat> Uh, you know, setting the tone and setting the table early, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, expound on that a little bit. Um, and you got to, because you got to, it's hard to go backwards. Absolutely. Right? You got to be able to establish it from the get-go, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
you rather them know put every, all your cards on the table so they know what to expect for future absolutely right? and then and that's being upfront with the athlete mm-hmm. um um and being upfront with the parents right this is what expected of me right i can't come back right it's like me being soft with my kids and all of a sudden something happened and all of a sudden i want to draw the link no right Mm-mm. right i gotta establish it first and then i'm gonna give you I'm, i i give you another i give you another link then i give you another link right but right now i can't give you the whole chain absolutely right? you have not earned that yet right? right so um it's very important right empowerment is very very important i believe and i think it can get um um undervalued sometimes when we're dealing with youth right because we are dealing with youth mm-hmm. right and then we also you know we as ad- adults grown folks right we always say man this generation is different right that's <laughs> like said, that, they said the same they thing said the us. same thing with us well, yes, man they did. and then the generation before that they said right. the same thing they so, said that about them as well our right parents exactly that, right? right you know what i'm saying i don't know what i'm gonna do with this child. You know, every every gen- man, no doubt but how no do doubt. we meet in the middle um how do we find out who what we who we're dealing with meet in the middle right uh not demeanor our or uh sugarcoat our values mm-hmm. and systems right right but find a way to meet in the middle to get the best out of that young man or young, young woman absolutely because right? everybody's unique right right this we didn't have technology then like they have now right, right? so what do you do about it right, right. Um, this is something that I'm working on because if it wasn't for my wife, I probably wouldn't exist on social media because no I doubt. just don't get on social media. Oh, much, course, right? we got to change that now. I know, I, mean, I know. I, I only I know. say that because I, that's kind of what I do. And you know, we when we met uh, a few weeks ago, you know, and I've kind of introduced you to what I do on social media. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of works hand in hand, but that's just, it's just a thing where you can't be scared to step out there. It's just like what you what you do with the training piece, but mm-hmm. you know, constructive social media you know that's right. a bad side and that's a good side for me social media is the way that i stay revving with things uh you know a lot of times it's the way that i see kids things not to switch gears on you but you know we're gonna work on that we're gonna keep working on right. it chipping away at it keep me accountable i got you right yes sir because yes, yeah. i'm i'm a uh extrovert <laughs> in person like, right. you got a chance yeah. to see me in the middle yeah. But then I'm an introvert when it comes down to social media, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll be messing with my kids like, we're going FaceTime live? What's FaceTime live? What is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or, right, uh, you know, right. so, uh, but but I also understand, right, um, that that's where that's where it's at. Right. And it's going there even more. Absolutely. So there's no, if I want to be able to encourage, empower, and elevate youth in a broader standpoint, um, I'm not saying the days of, physical interaction is gone no doubt but in order to reach the masses i had to find a way to do that right so absolutely hold me accountable for coach i, I mean, got you, you know. i got you I, I, we've been talking at least yeah. once a week since since we met and the thing you know I, I knew right away you know usually i have a pretty good thing where i can read people and you know i, I came away from the time that we met just saying i know that this guy's got something you know and, and you know not that I knew that we would be interacting or working together in some form or fashion. You know, mm-hmm. Boris Coach Jay is my guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, we work hand-to-hand together. But, you know, I watched, you know, me, I, I, you know, from scouting and everything that I do, I'm an observer. And I sit back and you may not hear me say a word, but I can observe and, and tell and, you know, the same story that you tell, I can tell on the flip side with my kids. Of course, I coached them growing up, a little bit of training and, and you know, maybe not training from the classroom, but for me being a football player and, and playing sports as a child, mm-hmm. you know, taking all the things that you learn from coaches, you know, and bringing that to coaching your kids. You, mm-hmm. you can tell when somebody know what they're doing. Right. It, it doesn't take long. And, you know, if you're observing and paying attention to detail, and I'll, everything I do in life is paying attention to detail. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I do MRIs for a living, so I, they pay me to look at yeah. images detailly. You, you know, to. and that, that's a whole different story. Right. You know, maybe people didn't know about it, but yes, I'm in the medical field for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. So I have to pay attention to detail in what I do in my professional life in scouting and football, recruiting, and everything that I do, even you know with the show. It's very meticulous as far as the preparation part of it. So I understand that piece. But I could tell that you have a gift for it, and that's the reason we wanted to get you on, not only to help uh, you know promote Beast Mode, but just tell your story. And we always want to give parents and kids that tune into uh, you know the On Your Mark show that follow it very close 
you know, this is like a, a, you know, a training session in itself, a testimonial type piece. And also, you know, we're giving you goods and nuggets that, you know, you probably will catch at seminars, mm -hmm. you know, avenues to get you where you want to go, which right. is the next level. Right. Now, before we get out of here, Mansfield Legacy High School is where you at the uh, JRCT, right? So, no, I'm at uh, Mansfield Lake Ridge. Lake Ridge, I'm sorry. Yes, yes it's, I meant Lake. So, sorry about that. I meant Lake, Lake Ridge. Talk about uh, JRCC a little bit. A lot of people may not know it unless that's in the school. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what does that mean to those kids, and how do you try to use everything that you bring to the table with that to get those kids ready? So a lot, a lot of people think about JRTC is two things: either you're going to the military, or that's where you send all the bad kids. Right, right? absolutely. And it's that's a misconception. JRTC is one of those courses where. <clears throat> We are our motto is to train at train uh students mm -hmm. to become better citizens, mm -hmm. right? And that means that's just like everything we do at coaching, right? right? We're meaning we're volunteering, right? You're giving back time, you're working on discipline, right? Teamwork, leadership, Absolutely. right? You're learning your seven army values, right? Because we're, we're army JRTC, mm -hmm. but which deals with uh loyalty duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. Those are things that we our our curriculum surrounds right right so it's for every young student right that's striving for excellence that wants to take those things right to be able to incorporate it on as an athlete mm -hmm. or as the next entrepreneur the next president of the united states whatever you want to do right, right. If you want to go to the military fine right you don't have to go to jrtc right but hopefully some of the things that we learn in jrtc right will help you in everything that you do in life that's what JRTC is for, right? And so um, our kids do a lot of different things out within the community. A lot of selfless service is really big, and teamwork is really big. And then we also put the kids, we just got back from Commerce, where we put the kids in positions where we challenge them, right? We challenge them to work on their leadership skills. You have some kids that don't even talk, right? They don't want to talk to nobody. They're very introvert, and so <clears throat> we're getting that out of them putting them in positions to be successful, to be leaders, right? To be able to talk and, you know, escalate your voice and be able to have, have a a uh, demanding, not demeaning, right, leadership style, right? That's what JRTC, those are things. Like I told my cadets this morning, we was doing PT, right? I, yeah, I'm a PT guy. I love physical training, right? Um, but your job is not to be like me, right? But you also understand that physical fitness it's gonna help you in life. It's gonna help, you know, for for our smart, smart kids, right? It's gonna help you in school. It's gonna help you slow things down. It's gonna help you with your health. Um, it's a lot of different things, right? Plus, it's gonna get you to learn. I want you to come in every day to learn at least one more thing about yourself, right? Get 1% better every single day. But the only way you get 1% better is if you do what? Right. You, get, you gotta give 100%. Right. You got to give 100%. Right. You can't give 99% and say, I'm going to give 1% because that's at 100%. Right. Like, I want you to give one on one. Right. So every single day, learn something new about yourself and then learn something new about your battle buddy. We right. Are, in the military, we call them battle buddies. Absolutely. Right? As a person that's in the foxhole with me that's going, you know, they're my ride or die. Right. Yeah. So everybody got your battle buddy. Right. So you, everywhere you go, you got to have your battle buddy. Right. Right. Your battle buddy got an issue, you got an issue. Right. Okay. Because you might be going through it one day and then your body buddy might be going through the next day. Right? Absolutely. So that's what the JRTC, but those are things that we're trying to just make better youth, right, within our community. And that's that's what we're doing. When, uh, and I tell them, hey, give me the kid that y'all don't want, right? And we're going to steady chip away, chip right. away, chip away, chip away until we have a smooth stone, right? We're going to steady chip away and we're going to make that person. It, it might not be overnight, mm -hmm. right? It might not be in the four years that we have them, right. right? But at least hopefully one thing, those little seeds that we drop while we're training, we're coaching, we're mentoring, we're teaching, instructing, whatever we're doing, whatever platform we got, those things at some point throughout their future, they're going to be like, man, you know what? That light skin short dude, man. <laughs> yeah, he dropped. Ding, 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 yeah, ding, ding, ding. you know what I'm saying? The yeah, light bulb. You have absolutely. that aha moment, yeah, right? They're like, absolutely. man, that was. I, I didn't know. I didn't understand it then. Right. But I understand it now, now. Right. That's the key. And we can all say that now. It's certain things absolutely. the old school people said to us, right, throughout all the, the time. years, right. All and the so, time. I 
so I, I appreciate the the opportunity to come on. Absolutely. But at the same time, I always say, coaching and training is so unique with me mm-hmm. that I want to be that holistic person within the athlete's life. Absolutely. Right. So. I don't have to train the world, right? But mm-hmm. the ones that want to come in, just like Eric Tom saying, all the bit of beast, you got to do what beast do. Right. So like some kids be like, hey, look, I want to train. All right, five thirty, five thirty. They're like, okay, five thirty. No, nah, five thirty in the morning. <laughs> five five thirty in the morning. Right. Well, what separates you between the rest of them? Absolutely. Because all my kids that's in college right now, they did the early morning work. Right. Right. But now when they're in college, it's easy for them now. Don't have no reason to get up. Yeah, if your easy. if your day to day look like everybody else that say they want to go somewhere, right? You're in the wrong. You're gonna be in the same bucket. Y'all gonna same same bucket. Well, coach, I appreciate you for hopping on. Listen, rewind this one back. Coach Butler from Beast Mode Performance here today on the On Your Mark Show again. Powered and sponsored every week by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete live from the Fishbowl Radio Network. Uh, coach, before we got here quickly, your website where they can find you. Uh, my website is BMXAP. Um, dot com. Yeah, you can go to BMXAP or you can find me on Twitter at One Coach Butler. There you have it, man. Listen, tap in, man. Listen. Also, I'll share this with you. There's going to be a special show on Friday from 1 to 2. Got my dude coming from the H. Waterworld 2. Listen, Sean Solo Jemison will be in the house with me from 1 to 2. We're going to talk about his new album, everything going H Town Sound. And, you know, if anybody knows me very well, I'm so Houston about everything I do. I mean, this is big for me. You know what I'm saying? So tap in with me. A special show it's Friday from 1 to 2, man. I'll start, you know, sending some things out about it this afternoon, man. But peace and love. Have an epic Wednesday. Take my guy, Mike out, out on Instagram. It's going to take us out, man. Have a great day. Hey, ready, set, go. It's time to hit the mark. This that show you need to know about. We set ourselves apart. Sports talk at the pinnacle. We got all the knowledge covering every level. Helping these young men get to college. Got the coverage of a DB. Vision of a QB coming at you like a DN. Let all of that sink in. Working in the weight room. We can't take no days off. Doing drills when they not looking. That's what make us stand out. Don't worry about how much time is left. We got it planned out. Execution elite footwork. Nasty when we running routes. Accuracy off the chain. We've been on it from the start. Reaching for the sky. Hitting the bullseye. We on the mark.